Hello there, my name is Anthony Gray of Grayscale Painting. What we're going to do is a barn. We're going to take that barn, tape it up to the paper, and um, we're going to sketch it out. Got some lead here, put it in the back of the paper. We're going to take this, we're going to put it somewhere over here. We're going to trace it out, take it off, tape it up. And we're going to commence with our painting. So, stay tuned. Okay, we're back. Now, for the glorious sake of time, I will most likely do this freehand. But I'm going to go through the process of transferring an image onto your canvas. But you know that I use 11 by 15 inch water color paper a 150 pound weight okay so we're just gonna get to getting like I say full of sick of time we're gonna do this I'm a, I'm gonna do it freehand if you want to use a ruler be my guest okay and I got a ballpoint pen here and I am going to simply trace all right the key elements to this barn go over on the outside as best as you can, okay? Now, even though you see me tracing this, and obviously the human hand is not as straight as a ruler, but that's okay. When it comes down to the final painting of this object, everything will look a lot more even because when it comes to cutting it, it will tend to straighten out a little bit. I'm not gonna do all the details of the barn, just the main parts of the barn itself. You'll never really know where you lost place at because quite frankly, you should see the ink um, marks on said barn. could speed this up but I don't think that should be necessary because I have lead on the other side of the paper obviously it can be easily erased or you just be covered up with the tape and the paint's gonna go over that and cover it up anyway so have no worries about that. The barn roof has a little bit of character. It's got a little bend in it. Then it goes straight down, like so. I'm gonna come over here on the other side. I will very lightly sketch where the land would be, like so. This little fella back here, he's a little bit behind yonder barn. His little fold is here and it goes inward. We've got a little shadow here. All this is just shadow. Okay. I think I've already did this part. I'll go over it again. There. put the slats on this one I've did this barn before if this is something that you like to do you might be doing it many times you don't have to press as hard the ink uh, the lead is pressure sensitive all right and you'll find that out as you go along. Like I said, if this is something you'd like to do. I believe I did this. I don't remember, but I'll do it again. Okay. Got a nice little crease right in here. You can keep the, the picture 
if you want, up to you. Like I said, I've done this barn before. There's many different ways to achieve the look that you're looking for with um, with the barn. Um, it's really up to you. I'm debating whether I should keep the tractor wheels in there or not. I'll put them in anyway. I might keep it. It depends on how this video's going. If I want to spend the time to do the wheels of Mr. Tractor, we'll see. I think, believe it or not, we're finished with this. I don't think I left out anything really major or important. I just wanted the obviously outside of the barn and all of that. So let's peel it back. Let's see what we got here. I think I have everything though. Yep, I pretty much got it all. And really that's all I need to do. Okay, if I have to look back at anything, all I have to do is look at the picture. Okay. But right now that'll come a little bit later. Let me show you something else here. I'm gonna use two inch wide masking tape and I'm gonna mask the barn. Why do I use two inch masking tape? Let's put it over a little bit. As you can see, you see the pressure on my hand, it leaves the mark. Very it's pressure sensitive though, the um lead. Well, one is because it's quite frankly it's wide enough. Okay. That's basically the reason why and you can see through it as you can see one of the toughest things to do or to cut across is the seam that you're gonna get when you overlap a little bit but be mindful that you're gonna overlap a little bit okay try to make sure you get the whole bar and you see that little piece there all right but make sure you try to get the uh, the whole barn if you can okay I'm not really too worried about it. I got a little corner missing here, but that can be that can be taken care of a little bit later. All right, you're gonna take a very sharp X-Acto knife, and you're gonna go around the perimeter of whatever object that you're masking. Now. When it comes to that seam, you may have to press a little hard. Okay, this um, paper, believe it or not, is more durable than um, than your uh, canvas. And just take your time with it. Remember, you're doing the outside edge. And so whatever background you choose to do, middle ground or, or foreground, it won't come into your, your painting. You can press harder on this paper than you can on your canvas. Believe it or not. Take your X-Acto knife, all right? Place your X-Acto knife in your other hand. You really don't want any accidents at this stage. And it really should just come off without any trouble, depending on how sharp your knife is. And if it does not, just recut it. It should just easily peel right off.
when I'm cutting, I'm moving my whole arm. I'm not moving my wrist. My whole arm is moving. Smoother cut that way. It should just come right off. Just like so. Now we have masked the object that we intend to go to later. Now the only thing you have to do is bring the camera back a little bit. The only thing you have to do really is to concentrate on where you would like to have your land. Okay, you can mimic what you see on the um, on the paper. It's truly up to you on how you want this um, to be done. Like so. I do plan to have the trees somewhere up here. Something like that. Mostly covering the top of the paper. That don't necessarily mean that you won't see any sky. Um, it's just be in between the leaves and such. And it gets a little darker all up in here, but you're gonna see the rest of the trees. I'll put a few different types of trees. I'll do the deciduous trees in the back. Pop a couple of pines in the in the front. Different variety of greens. We'll probably have something big coming around here just to give it a sense of depth and all that good stuff. Maybe some fence poles, who knows? Okay, but we'll. We'll uh, hash that out as we go forward. But basically, that is the uh, condensed version of how to mask your subject. Okay, it's the same height and everything. All right, see, it's the same height. Okay, it's just you see all the details and whatnot. You just don't see it on here because I didn't put them in. I won't need to. I'll do that later in the painting. Okay, but that's it. All right. Okay, and I'll be back. If you we'll switch the screen over, uh, if you see, this is a state wet palette. It's got paint on here from the last session I did a few days ago, so everything's still pretty wet. Um, it's got a, a ultramarine blue. We got blue th uh, phthalo blue, a little bit of uh, Elizabethan crimson there, some titanium white, and some uh, medium yellow this time. Okay. And we have obviously the water and some glycerin. All right, I'm gonna use a very light amount of glycerin today. Just a light amount. It's just for the sky. We're gonna make the sky interesting, but you're not gonna see too much of it. I just want the values to, to appear through the leaves. Okay, we're back here to the top. And we're gonna slap some of that glycerin up. Primarily above the barn. I'm gonna take some from over here and just put it right here. Just need a thin amount. Don't need too much of this stuff. I highly doubt I'll use it for the grass or anything like that. It's mainly for the sky. We're gonna use a lot probably to glaze the barn. Okay, but just like that. Now for those of you who got really good cameras, you probably see a little staining there. It's probably from the brush and a little bit from the lead. Don't worry about it. Trust me, it's not gonna last very long. Okay, I guess I'll use this brush, it's fine. This is just a 200 flat brush, you can see it's starting to wear out on me. So I might have to do a brush act to me pretty soon. Okay, we're gonna go with a little nice light color. We're gonna go with a little white, little bit of the yellow. And all I'm gonna do really is just touch up around in here. Okay, and maybe a little bit there. So it's a little, little brighter up there. All right, and, and what you're looking at, that's about all I need for that, okay? I may use just a touch of red so everything doesn't become too green. So I'll just throw in some of that here and there. Just a little bit, nothing to really kind of show or make a big difference or anything, just like that, bring it down here. And that's only use so I don't have to, doesn't become too green, okay? And I'm cleaning off the brush one more time. We're gonna blend all of this together with a mop brush. Let's take a little bit of the sky blue. 
Okay. And we're going to really put it up here like that. Just like so. It may be a little bit of phthalo blue on this corner up here. Why two different two blues? Why not? Like I said, a lot of this is going to be covered anyway. And let's put a little peak of that in there. Maybe mix some of that in here, just like that. No big deal. Okay, let's bring the camera up a little bit there. Well, of course, it looks like a hot mess. It's going to be a lot. A lot of it's going to be covered up with lily uh, leaves. Let's take a blender. Okay. I just it's a little soft blender. Okay, and we're just gonna start. Let's go with the yellow first. We're just gonna start mixing it in there, very softly. Now remember, a lot of trees are going to be behind here, which is why I got the barns kind of silhouetted in that yellow with little hints of red so it doesn't turn too green on you, which really isn't going to matter because the green's going to be covering up this with the, with the trees and such. So if it turns a little green, that's fine. But this, that red is going to cover up a lot of that. Then we're going into our sky here and just carefully kind of blend that in. The glycerin is what's helping it blend in okay so have no fears about you know, the colors mashing in and, and all of that don't don't worry about that I'm probably gonna go a little darker with the blue maybe I'm thinking as I'm doing it I'm just going to, with a soft brush, just blend it all in there real nice, nice. Just like so. Just like that. I'm still debating whether I really want to darken up that, that corner or not. I might. Just a little stronger, just a little stronger blue in there like that and I just kind of stir it in there this is not thalo blue it's ultramarine blue so it's not that dark anyway but I kind of I kind of think that's uh, satisfactory that, uh, that'll work just fine and everything else back there I think is cool like I can say I don't have to add any clouds you'll see in a second what I'm talking about look down here Okay, we got a little phthalo blue happening here. I gotta be careful with this stuff. Like I say, it's still pretty wet. So I'll put the phthalo blue in there. Get me a nice little batch of yellow. Put it right in. Now this paper can be actually cleaned off again. It's pretty thick, pretty durable paper. Get a little bit of red in this. Really darken it up. There's a reason why I'm going for such a dark green and it might be even darker than this so I might put a little phthalo blue in this I really want a darker green let's put the rest of that phthalo in there to really darken it up for the tops of the trees okay and as I do this I'm just using a if you guys can see it I don't know if you guys can see it because of the way the sunlight is but it's a sponge here okay it appears kind of dark there but it's got interesting patterns there all right okay and we're gonna just go into our deep greenish here I didn't uh, soak the brush or anything won't need to right now, not at this point. And we're going to make deciduous trees, but I want interesting tops to them. Don't drag this stuff around. Okay, I'm just working on the tops. 
just the tippy tops there. Just like that. Turn your brush around, get all sorts of interesting little shapes through them. Just like this. Bring some way up there. Now remember, these are just the tops right now. So all I'm concentrating on is just the, the tops of the trees. We're gonna get more solid as we go downward. All right, I'm getting some more. And as we go further down, they're gonna get a little darker, a little more packed. Try your best not to drag the paint. Just touches and presses like so. Now the darker we get, or the bottom, more toward the bottom we get, the more bunched up it is. But you kind of want a pressed on pattern still. Just keep pressing. You can probably hear me hitting the canvas there. Just keep pressing. Okay. But you can see bits of the sky coming through there. All right. I'm just getting some more of the paint. Especially when it's close to the barn, you really want to kind of surround that barn with the, the bushes a little bit. Come down here. Okay. And you slowly lighten up on your pressure a little bit as you come up above. Doesn't look like much now, but it will in a few minutes. Like that. Now, while it's a little bit wet like that, oh, I'm gonna get a little touch more of a lizard and crimson. I want it pretty deep down, down below. So I'm adding a little crimson to that green. I put a little crimson here too. I'm gonna go into my thalo blue in a second. Okay, let's take the old trusty palette knife here. And we're gonna stir some of that around. Still got some of that green. Now it's got a whole lot of red in there. Okay, so I'm gonna get a little touch of blue. Get some more yellow. Still want that green tinge to it, but um, really much, much darker. And that's what I'm getting right now. I'm satisfied with the color that I'm mixing. That's actually perfect. It's a nice batch color there. Okay, once again, we're dipping into this very dark green. And we're coming down here. See that? See all that darkness there? Can you see the difference? I want it kind of just like that. Look at that color. We're going to bring some of that color up into the trees a wee bit. You're not going to drown out everything. Just like that. Getting some more of the color. And really want to kind of shade that barn in this darkness there. Bring some of it up. Okay. But you really want it down here fairly fairly deep color just like so all right you still see bits of that sky in there <coughs> all right and pretty much where your land mass is, is, is you know i'll just mark it off right here your land mass is back there okay i'll just mark it there that's where your land is back there okay all right now i'm gonna clean off this uh sponge now it's your preference if you want to wet your sponge before you do that that's you're perfectly fine doing so these sponges are very durable take care of them they'll last you for years and years and years i usually edit this part out but i wanted to show you the sponges the sponge is okay okay now i don't have the other lights on because i'm filming this in the morning so i got a bunch of sunlight going through the window all right so we know where our, our land mass is back there. Okay, cause I just marked it off here. Okay. We're gonna take, I'll take Mr. Pellet Knife again. We're gonna get a little bit of, look down here, get a little bit of red, put it in with a green. Cause they're color opposites. We're gonna get a slight touch of white and put it in there. We're gonna kinda see if we can get a nice decent 
warm gray out of that. Okay, that's fine. What you're looking at right there is perfect. Give it a nice little cut across, gentle cut across. And we're gonna pop in some little bits of trees in there. Just like that, have some come up. All right, some thicker, some thinner. Okay, they don't have to necessarily be in the bottom. Put some up there too. Just vary them. Get some more of that nice light gray. Some could be thicker, thinner. Up to you how you want to do them. Okay, now pop some pretty close to each other. Just like in the real forest somewhere in there, you know. Put some coming way up here on the other side here. Get a little bit more. You put them into your heart's desire, all right? Make little branches come away from, from, from some of them. Get some fairly thick. The larger, thicker trees appear to be much closer. So I'll get a couple of nice little tall, tall ones up there like that. Let's get a branch come out there like that on one, like this. Much like that. All right. We're gonna take some of that blue, some of that green we have. Nope, medium. Don't put any medium in this stage. Maybe a little bit of red, kind of darken it up a little bit. And using the corner of this brush, we're just gonna pop in some, some leaves or whatnot. Just going around here like that. We can even, we'll highlight it a little bit, not too much, but just a nice little batch of little dark leaves in there like that. We'll take a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Get some of that dark, put it in there. I want them highlighted, but not really too much. And we can start tapping in some interesting little leaf patterns in there. I can probably get them a little, little brighter. So let's add a little more white. All this making really is a lighter shade of what we have already. Just like that, bring some in there. I'll pop a couple of them in there. Oh, up and around in here a little bit. I don't want them, like I say, too light. Just like that, just a few. Okay, all right, just like so. No harm, no foul. We're gonna get a, oh, uh, let's, let's do a, a three. No, we're gonna use this brush. We're gonna go back to the old two inch brush here. We're gonna come downward. I really don't wanna use any glycerin. I'm gonna take some phthalo blue, a little bit of this ultramarine blue. We're gonna mix that in a little bit, a slight hint of red. And we're just going to come up here. I'll block that off a little bit like that. Don't make it even. We're just below those bush lines there. Do a little bit on the other side there. And we're just blocking in the land area. That's all. Now when you're blocking in the land area, that's all you're doing really. It's just blocking it all in. Let's get a little more thalo. Mm. My poor paper is coming apart there. Put that back in there. A little bit of red. Tiny bit of yellow. Just like that. And we're just gonna kinda have a little fun there and just block all that in. Vary your colors a little bit. There's no medium. I didn't put any medium in this. It's just a regular paint. I could put medium in here or water. If I take a little bit of water, just a little bit, and put it right in here in this thick color, because we're just blocking stuff in. And you just block it in. See? 
That's it. Water will make it a little bit transparent, so you might have to go over it a few times, depending on what you're looking for. But water, if you use water, it dries. So, and basically, we're just blocking it in, so it's no big deal. You're just blocking in all of this stuff, just like so. And we're gonna add our grasses and stuff to this. If you don't want too many of, of the streak marks, you know, do the X stroke. It gets rid of those streaks while it's while it's wet. But this is the just the underneath the ground. It's starting to get tacky and dry already using the water. All right, but there you there you have it, much like that. So we're focusing a bit on the background and the mid ground until we take that barn off. Okay, I'll take the same brush because it's kind of thick here. And we're gonna go back into our little bit of yellow, a little white, and brighten it up a little bit. And we're gonna go into our phthalo blue, get some nice little patch of green going here. Nothing really special about the grass. We're just gonna tap that in there. And much like, just so we're gonna tap, tap the grass patterns in there. Just like that, tap it right in there. We'll do certain little bits of highlighting and stuff, but we're, right now we're pretty much just flashing in the grass. You don't have to get rid of all your undercut color. Okay. As you see, there's speckles of other colors in there. Don't worry about that. We're gonna correct all of that. And remember this stuff kind of dries darker. Acrylic dries through evaporation. Okay, I'm turning my brush around. I still got some extra bits of color in there. And that's all we're doing is just tapping all of this in. Especially toward the, toward the back back there. Let's get a little bit more of that color. And I'll establish something back there like that and we'll just kind of keep doing it once we get into the brighter highlights and where you're going to use a different brush everything will become a little more re refined but you're just establishing some pattern of looks of grass and all that good stuff I'm going to go into the, some of this darker blue get some more blue because the foreground's usually pretty deep anyway, so we're, we're gonna do all that. We're gonna do more of that with the fan brush. Let's tap in those nice little patterns in there. Just like that. Come on down in here. And it's basically, basically it. This guy is a number 12 fan. Okay, let's make some more green. Let's go, let's go with uh, what's left of this ultramarine blue. We're gonna put it right up in there. I don't think I got enough for it to make a real difference. Let's get a little bit brighter. I'm just adding yellow to it right now. And a slight, and I do mean a slight bit of white. Now, touch a touch of the blue. Okay, I think that should do it. A little touch of white just to brighten up a little bit. Now you start to establish where you want your grass. Okay, in the scheme of things. Remember, you're gonna put pines in this also. So we're gonna, one, establish where the end of the, uh, end of the woods going into the, um, the field here just like that just establish some little grass patterns here and there just like so then we'll highlight some of this some okay and we're gonna come up in the front of this guy and add some nice little patches in there you're gonna be adding more grass as we take off the barn like that I'm gonna stop it at a certain spot because we're gonna get darker grass coming into the foreground right here establish that 
bag back there. And then we'll just kind of play with it. You can um, kind of mold and build what kind of texture grass you want. I'll stop it right around there. We're just going to get a little more blue. Yeah, a slight touch of red. Foreground. And it just makes a nice deep green. Okay, no medium. Let's see if I can bring my my in. We're gonna start putting it in light lightly. Mix it in with the other greens here. Just like that. Just tap it in a little bit. Up in here. Just establish some gradation, gradation of color right up in there. Then you get heavier down at the bottom. Down the bottom you can kind of even if you want to make a little hill in here just like that and I'm just tapping the paint out this paint has no medium in it fairly uh, fairly dark the reason why I don't have any medium I want it, I want it to dry rather quickly this is heavy body acrylic paint okay as you see, I'm not dragging none of this. I'm flipping the brush around. You're just establishing some nice grass patterns in here. Down toward the bottom here. Fairly, fairly deep, fairly dark. Okay, and we'll bring some of that up in here a little bit. Just, just little bits here and there. Let's take a little bit of yellow. the tiniest bit of white in that greenish yellow I don't want my highlights to be extremely bright and it's wherever you feel you need to place this stuff maybe a little bit on the edge here the brighter the color the less of it you need follow me okay just like that Get a little interesting little patch patterns there I'm gonna put some around in here like this we have it come toward the front just a little bit yeah Maybe off to the side here. We can put a couple of those little sparkles in here too. Not not too much in a, in a darker area. Uh, maybe a few little speckles in there. All right, we're gonna come over here to the other side in that that back part back there. Put something over here. As we get a little bit past the barn, we'll pop in a few bright spots in there. Not too much in the front, more in, on the sides here, like so. Let's kind of uh, pretty these guys up a little bit, okay? We're going to take a little bit of yellow, a little bit of the phthalo, yeah, in the corner of the same fan brush, a little more yellow, a little touch of white. And maybe a little, little, little dab of red. I don't want it too. You just graze it out a little bit. Oh. All right. And we'll start making nice little clusters of brightness here and there. You're not, you're not making new um, branches. You just want to kind of. It's like giving it a little haircut. Upward by the branches here or the uh, trunks, you can kind of flavor it up a little bit. I don't want to get rid of all of the background that you, um, the sky color you see poking up in there. Put a couple of those up in there like that. As you see, it's brighter, but it's not glaringly bright. Okay, oh, I'm gonna do a few of them up in here. Cover up some of the. some of the bits of bark the trunks of the trees we come up here and we're gonna kind of it's just bringing all of this together really just like that we're gonna take some white some yellow remember the brighter this stuff is the less of it you need and just on the very tops we'll pop in some Little glowy things. Just 
little, little, like little bits of sun coming in there a little bit. And just group them, okay? Group them where you would, you would figure some of that sunlight would appear on these fellas. Come over here on the other side, pop in a few in there. Up, up, up above here. Just a few taps. Not necessarily all over the place, especially on the top. Where you know the sun is gonna hit these guys a little bit. Just like that. Okay, nothing necessarily down here. Keep it pretty deep, dark. I told you we're gonna get a different set of greens and we're gonna get some pine trees in here. So we're gonna get a few pines in here. Some, some more thalo. Get a little bit of red, turn it kind of maroon. Um, a slight hint of yellow in there. But basically I want it pretty dark. We're gonna add the green on this once we establish a couple of the pine trees. All right, we can have one oh, about this high. He's gonna come down about, maybe about there. And here we go. I kind of like my pine trees a little healthy in the middle. Okay. Now these guys are in front of the other fellas, so just keep that in mind, okay? And you can shape your pines any way you really would like. I think we'll kind of have them up around there like that. I'm gonna get a little bit of water, thin the paint out just a little bit. This is a heavy body acrylic. So I'm thinning out just a wee bit. It's not gonna make it transparent or anything, but it's definitely gonna, um, we'll put a crooked one oh, right around there somewhere. Just like that. Now it's a little watery, so. Get a nice strong silhouette there and have him kind of run in with the other fellow like that okay so you got you got one there or a couple like so okay i'll put one right behind the barn here just like that then oh, out here we're gonna put a tree behind the barn right here right around in here put one right up in here like that he's gonna be right behind the barn just like that. He's gonna show up right behind that barn. Just like so. Okay. All right, let's get a little more of that red. Let's get a little more of that blue. No. We'll just leave that be. We'll mess with the, um, I could have another one right around in here, coming down this far. Let's have another one right behind the barn. Just like that. Make him an unusual looking one. Just like that, right behind the barn there. Okay. I'm thinking of putting another one. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna put it there. Right. Have a taller one right there. Right down here, he's coming. He's behind the barn there. And Just like that, and another one right here. He's right behind the right behind the barn there, right there. Okay, so you got about three behind the barn, two on the side. All right, okay. take a slightly smaller fan brush and we're gonna put some uh white left but that's okay all right here we go I'm gonna start doing a little highlighting here okay so we got some of this nice bright green and we're gonna get, establish a nice interesting pattern and I don't want to destroy all of the that nice dark we have you can kind of see where you're going with it bring some of that on the other side Okay, just like that. Yeah, and you see I got it kind of shining a little more to the right hand side. Just like so. Alright, 
make them very interesting interesting little patterns for your trees very interesting patterns we know that there are pines back there where they're playing around okay it's like so and you got the unusual ones here let's get a little more paint and with some of these guys in the background all it takes is a little gentle touch remember I am not using any kind of glycerin or any anything like that okay just the paint because I wanted to dry rather quickly and if you got darker trees that aren't really adhering to any kind of real shape you can always correct the shape in your highlights as you can see okay just like that all right okay yeah, like I said, there, it's the mid-ground back there. Now, you can just about barely see some of those trees back there because of the pines, but that's all right. Darken it up a little bit. Something like that. I got a deep green here. So I'm going to add a little red to that. I got white in there, too. A little more red. There we go. That's fine. Okay, that should be enough. I got plenty of them on, on my brush as it is, so that's fine. I'm gonna just take the palette knife and we're just gonna go from side to side here. Just a side to side, just like that. Get a little path going. I'll put a path right up around here. I'm keeping the path kind of narrow. It's getting wider as we get down toward here. Get some of that out of there. That's it, that's getting just wider and wider. So, and if it's too much for you, you can always add more green to cover that up. But we got a nice little little path walk, little walkway path there. All right. Just like that, just that quick. I'm gonna take a little thin bout of yellow. I don't think I got too much white left. And it doesn't matter at this stage. Um, let's see if that makes a difference. And we're just gonna kinda lightly go across with this. Just for some kind of um, just some pattern of scrape some of that off if it's too much. Just some little kind of woodsy pattern stuff. Put some of that back there. And we reclaim some of that there. There. Little left to right action, just like that. Alright, just a little little path. No more than that, because we can always once again, recover with some of the uh, some of the green. Okay, something close to black, but we don't totally want to use black. We spread that color out a little bit. Okay, and we'll start adding cute little posts around in here, like here. Make it pretty thick. And this one here is closest to us, so you make this one a little, a little thicker like that. Okay. So nice thick pulse. Uh, we'll have one, and we'll have it kind of like this. Just like that. We just kind of put it in there like so. Usually a, um, we'll put it one right here. Just like that. And we'll put another one right here. And they're gonna get a little shorter and shorter as they come up to uh toward the barn there. Alright. And we'll put one right around in here like this. And we're gonna come on the other side. We have one leaning in like that. And we have one leaning out there like that. Make them fairly interesting looking. They're not all perfect. Some are gonna lean over time and all of that we'll put another one right in here like this 
we'll get a separation there. Mm. We'll leave the rest alone for later because we gotta do the barn. Okay, I don't have much white left, so let me uh, plant some in there. I'm picking and choosing where to put certain things because of the barn, really. Get a little bit of white going to this little mixture you had here. I'm gonna take a little bit of brown and put that in there like that. And get some more white, put it in there like that. Just like so. And get a little bit of that color. And you start doing little highlights here and there. Just like that. Sometimes a line is all it takes. All depends on how you would like to do your your pose. Looks like I'm gonna be using a final highlight of white or something to really make them pop out there. Cause this isn't really dark enough. And that's no problem. So I'm gonna go into my little bit of white here. It's got brown and other bits of color mixed in it and that's fine. But it will definitely jump out at you. It's like I say, sometimes you just need a little touch of this stuff. Just like that. I think you guys can see what I'm doing here. Yeah. That's a little much. Let's make that disappear. There. All right. It's getting a little more bright white. I'm just looking where it's placed on my on my palette knife here. I think you can kind of sort of see some of that action going on there. There. Yep, I think you guys can see a little bit of that happening. Okay, that little bit of what you see right there is just wet paint. Alright, it's not it's not the bright paint, the white. Okay. I think we're somewhat alright as far as that's concerned. Let's see if I can do this with this knife. Don't know, but I'm about to find out. Can put a little, little bit of. Uh, see if it'll let me do it. Yeah, it'll let me do it a little bit. I'll kind of pop one right here. A little bit of uh, twine or rope or whatever. It would have him extend right off the page there. And I'm just using the edge of the knife. That's all. Some of that right in here, a little bit right there, and he's coming off at an angle right about in here. I can kind of, and you take, you can too, kind of get away with doing stuff like that. And we'll have him, we'll have him come out this way, up this way, like that. Get a little bit of that, that white there. If it's too much, wipe it away. If you feel you did, you did it too, to put too much of it on there. Because it all depends on how much of um, the white you have on here. Um, like that, maybe a little one here. Cross, cross that one there like that. We'll put another one aiming this way, but it's going to stop right up there. I just need a small amount of white just to do it. It just takes a small touch. Lean it in like that. Let's get this one a little bit brighter. Here, like that. All right, we got one here. Come on. Like that. Cut into it a little bit. All right, I think we're I think we're pretty good. We got a little pass thing. If anything else we need, we'll just add that later if I remember. All right. So as you see, we got um, some of that taken care. Of. We can't put anything else in there until we take care of the barn. All right, so. We'll start to peel off the barn here.
and you're gonna pull lift okay so it comes off cleanly don't rush this pull lift I think I only use a few pieces of tape for it anyway and there's your barn all right and we'll start to have a little fun with this barn now it depends on how detailed you would like to go with your with your barn because you can add all sorts of interest interesting things um, to your barn okay I'll zoom in because um, I'm gonna take a break after this and then come back to it but it'll just be a jump cut for you guys um, but all sorts of interesting bits and pieces of, of stuff you can add to this fellow as you can see here's the detail once I zoom up here because we're just gonna concentrate on the barn okay now you can establish your shadows if you want okay your deep shadows or you can just block everything with one color and then you know do it that way it's whatever you prefer to do with your with your barn at this um, at this juncture this point in time okay like I said I pretty much know what the barn looks like anyway and I can easily establish the uh, the colors or the texture or whatnot um, you can handle the texture uh, a few different ways if, if you would like okay but I'll, I'll show you um, how that goes so I'm gonna take a little break and we'll return okay welcome back once again for the sake of time we're gonna do a little texturing all right I'm gonna use the fan brush here guys you pretty much see that it's in focus here all right this one is the number four fan and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some light texturing to give it the appearance of a uh, wood grain all right but before I do that let's um no I'm, a, I'm gonna do it this way I'm going to look down here I got some extremely dark brown this is actually ink okay and I'm gonna just lightly put in the wood grain all right um go straight down with it just establish a pattern with this stuff just like that give it a look of wood grain here don't worry about being perfect just scratch it on there just like so right over the door and everything you, you'll kind of know where everything is anyway I'll get it a little darker here I'm on the edge here just for the emphasis of a little shadow right up in there all right go right to the edge there if you kind of know where everything is all right it will be fine right here's a little little dark in there but it's still going downward and we're gonna establish still a sense of depth even with these little stripes that we got going down here all right you'll see like I said it might look a little crazy right now all right but that's okay everything will pan out I'm gonna get a little bit of darkness right in here for the underside of the wood right up in there we'll get this one here a little dark because that's it's behind that other spot in there okay um I think that should be more or less about about it we'll darken that right up in there and a little character to this fella just like that okay I'll come up from the bottom a little bit just like so come up from the bottom I think that's about it for that guy all right and that is just super dark brown India ink right there a little Higgins India ink for that okay all right and it dries super fast so don't worry about um if you don't think it's gonna dry quick enough or whatnot it will i'm gonna take a liner brush and i'm gonna go into my super dark brown ink here and we'll fine tune a few things here as you see i'm not necessarily going over the um you're not outlining anything in black okay that won't be necessary I can kind of fine-tune some of this stuff in here just like that it melts right into the 
it soaks right into the paper so don't worry about that that little bit right in there that's covered up everything don't worry about that either it's okay I'm just tightening up straightening up lines don't necessarily have to use black as you can see just like that if there's anything that's a little off kilter you can always paint right over it so have no fear with uh, anything of that nature you know that going on all right don't worry about that okay let's take a little bit of water on my liner brush I'm just thinning out the paint that's on my brush okay and we're gonna lightly this is all shaded this is underneath the garage in here all right now all I did was just thin out the uh, the color we're going to be going over that with a little bit of shadow color so don't worry about that I might put the wheel I might keep the wheels in there we'll see but this is off fairly dark I'm getting a little more of the super dark color getting some water watering it down a little bit <coughs> and we're gonna go back over it just fill it right in there don't worry about the color shifts that will be corrected right now we're all we're doing is blocking in color Just like so, block it all in. I remember this is ink. All right, it's acrylic, but it's it's ink and it dries ridiculously fast. Just like um, just like acrylic um paint. And like I say, I'm just coloring it. As you can see, it's been watered down. If you can see the the value between this and um, the rest of the coloration just like that okay all right I don't think I need any more I'm looking let's get that little closer right in here that's a little bit there okay now the rest of this is going to be kind of fun because you're going to deal with different shades and values and all of that fun stuff we're going to go to smaller brushes I'm looking for something that I know I can uh, yeah we'll do we'll do this fellow this is a number seven flat we'll we'll play with this guy okay look down here we're gonna get a little bit of glycerin just a little bit I'll put it right here I'm gonna get a touch of a little touch of the brown we'll put the brown in there and a little bit of the blue just like so get a little more brown in that okay a little, little touch of glycerin almost like a little glaze okay let's come back up here okay so here's where the fun part begins it's almost like a little coloring book of sorts okay and we'll work with oh well let's let me do something before i do that let's take a script liner let's get some shading in on these doors remember we got we got doors uh we got doors here okay oh let's i know we got a window we got a, a door right here so we're gonna kind of make the letter l we'll do it right from here just like that get a little, little shading there and we'll do it this way because it is a door right there We'll make this one come down a little bit, a little recess right in there like that. Okay. And then we'll just kind of put a thin one right in there like so. All right. We got another door. <coughs> we'll darken in that fellow right about, right about, let's go. Yeah, right here is fine. We'll put the door right here. Some dark recess there. And we'll make it the letter L right here, right about there. A little wide door right there. Just like so. 
Okay, and we'll put a little thin line right there. This is the mark where that door is. Right about there. Okay. Let's put a nice little line right here. Right where that roof line is. Right up in there. Just little fine-tuny little things. Mm, I think we're good. Put one right here. Darken that one out a little bit. Bring some of that down. Just, like I say, little teeny little nuances here and there for that. All right. I don't think I need anything else. Now we will commence to the fun. Let's put script liner back. Got a nice little light brownish color here. Okay. And we're just going to start glazing in color. Now, as you see with the glaze, Everything's still somewhat visible. We we'll go over the wheels and everything with it. Just like that. Okay, we're gonna glaze some of that roof. The initial glaze here. You see that <coughs> there's more glaze than paint. So you can move it around. Now with with this uh, glycerin I got for a medium, when it starts to dry and all that fun stuff, it starts to expand, it spreads apart. So don't worry about street lines. It's gonna slowly disappear. I'm just getting more of that color and we're just going to color stuff in here just like that we're going to add we're going to sneak in all sorts of little colors and stuff in this right now it's just the initial shading and as you can see the india ink is not wearing away it's not drying off it's not streaking it's, it it's none of that's going to happen okay and this is a very thin amount so we're good and as you see it's not visible if you kind of go over the lines, quote unquote, because it's very thin, very thin coat. But look at what you're having already. Okay, we're gonna get a little touch of that blue and a small touch of that red, which makes a beautiful shadow color with the glycerin. Okay, and you start to kind of go over shaded parts there see this see how everything's starting to kind of flesh out there you can make some of that door a little darker not not all of it just a little bit of it okay this guy's in the back so we're gonna kind of darken him a little more just like so put it right in there and don't worry about street lines they're gonna slowly disappear Okay, we can even get a little, 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 little bit of red. Now, glycerin is already on here. So you can add all sorts of interesting little shades to this guy. Look at this. Don't have to necessarily color all of it. Okay, a little bit down there like this. Maybe a little bit in there. Pop a little bit on the sides. <coughs> I can throw a little bit of it in here. Let's go into Thalo. Halo blue a little and I mean a tiny bit this is a very powerful color okay and you can come on up in here throw a little bit of it that way put some of that door it's like that a little bit in there the smallest amount of phthalo you can get that's all you would need the smallest amount very tiny Okay, now if you feel you put too much on, you wipe it off, it can come off. Just like that. Mix it right in with that brown there. Get a nice little shade color. Nice little shadow color there. See that? All right, all sorts of interesting things you can do with the glycerin in the paint. All you need is very little, very little bit. See, you can kind of tint that barn up a little bit on the roof. Just a little bit. It still moves around. Okay. See that? You bring a little bit of that on the side here. All right. Let's go into a little phthalo blue. I'll put it right here. Look here. A little bit of that brown ink. Okay, very dark. Get some glycerin. 
we'll put it right here we're we'll losing some of that color up there get rid of some of that color right in here you can start darkening things even where the wheel is you'll still find the wheel just darken it right up there see very nice powerful shadow color there it's not overly it's not like jet black okay very very um, inviting type of color now I'm gonna go back to my little script liner here get some of that same color and we're gonna See, as you get closer and closer toward the, toward the uh, finishing of certain things, you can kind of narrow stuff down into its detail. Okay. Let's uh, establish a darker side right here. Or a nice shadow side there. All sorts of interesting little details. I'm going back into my dark color. Remember, there's glycerin right on here so it spreads. And you step back and take a look at it. Okay. I can probably go a little bit darker there. Just like that. There we go. So we're just establishing a nice little edge. How about right here? All sorts of fine-tuning, nice little things you can do all around the sides here. You know, really, really fun things you can you can really accomplish with that. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, let's see if I got a little bit of white there. We got a little bit. I'll go into this brown and white. It kind of grayed up a little bit. Just a little bit. And we'll start putting in right up around in this area in here. Is that wheel? There we go. And we're going to do little cute little things so that you know that there's a little machine in there. Some little bits of color there. And we're going to Thicken up. We're going to thicken up that wheel with some color. Right in there. Keep that nice circular motion there. This one here seems to be fine. I'm not worried about that one. Put a little tractor wheel right in there like that. Alright, and we're going to let that dry. Okay. I'm still looking, still checking things out. I want the ones, the the little piece of barn back there, this one here. I want it a little more subdued, so let's put a little more dark in there. Just like that. Right around that edge there. Darken them up a little bit, just like so. Okay. All right, and still checking things out here. Just like that, I can kind of scrape some color here. It brings it a little darker, but it's not covering up the original color too much. Just like that. All right, see how interesting you can get things? Let's take a little bit of that color. Let's rub some of it in there. Rub that beam in there. Have the beam come in a little further. All right. So, you see how simple that was? Okay. So, let's pull back a little bit. Let me see what you got here. All right. Now. As of right now, it's in there, right? But it just looks like it's just sitting on there. All right. So you're gonna put some grass and some stuff around there to kind of make it inclusive to the uh, to the piece. Okay. All right. I want to add a little bit of darker color to 
the wood here like that and a little bit in here just a little bit there okay mm, we'll kind of shade that up a little bit like that a little bit of a shadow just like that not all of it just a little bit in there okay all right I can take this very same brush it's a tiny little fella and it gives me it to give me the grass pattern I'm looking for so I'm picking a somewhat clean spot on my palette which is not very much of get a little bit of yellow a little bit of this mixing white a little bit of yellow okay then we'll start picking off some, some really bright spots um just like this little, little taps here and there usually over the same stuff that I had before I'm not dragging it it's just getting some interesting grass patterns here and there see just like that all right go back into my mixing white a little bit of yellow the mixing white all it does is just increase the value of whatever color you're putting that mixing white into that's it no more no less than that so it's going to start looking like direct little sunlight patches in there okay all right this is where you get into the small detaily things okay we'll spread a little bit of love maybe right around here and little, little, little bits and pieces of stuff in there not really too much to write home to mom about with this on this side keep it pretty dark ish over in that side i'm gonna show you something too to kind of um but before we go on to that let's get a little bit of mixing white uh, i'll mess with this green a little bit let's put let's put it right here get a little bit of yellow get some mixing white put the mixing white in there we'll brighten it up a little bit that's not bright enough so we're gonna go to a little titanium white Titanium white is my friend. Titanium white, very opaque. I need only a little bit. There we go. Look at that. See that? All right. Oh, uh, let's highlight a few of these trees here, just on the on the top. Let's we're gonna bring it in a little bit, and let's go over here. Just a few little little touches. Just to let you know that this tree is definitely in front of things. And stuff like that. So he's definitely in the front. All right, let's, let's put a little shine on this guy too. Interesting little glob of paint, and I'm going just going over what I've already previously put down there, just like that. All right, put them put them on the front street there. Okay, we'll move it over. We'll pop a little bit of some of that love around this guy, and sometimes it just takes a gentle touch, just like that. We're gonna come over. We're gonna brighten up the other other side there and I don't necessarily have to go full out with it just like that move the camera over and yeah, we got a little bit up here but don't get rid of those darks just like that just a little bit okay just to brighten them up a little bit all right all right Let's go in a little touch of phthalo blue in this dark mix here. I'm pressing my brush to get interesting little patterns. And we'll just start kind of give a little push here. Put some little grasses in there. Little bits of bushes right up in here. You want to include this guy into your painting. Put some right up in that, in that. Right up in that bush. Right up in that, that corner. Right up in here. 
And we're going to get a little bit of yellow. Right on the brush here, a little touch of white. And you just brain up a few things. It just takes a very soft touch. Okay. Put some up in there like this. And some up, up, up in here. A little bit. You just want to include things in there so it's, it's, it's you know, like part of the, the landscape of the place. Okay. All right. We're going to go towards, we're going to pull back a little bit. Let's come out here. Since we're nearing the end of this, I'm going to take a very small, very tiny brush, a little bit of this mix, uh, it's not mixing white, this is just titanium white. And I'm going to use the side of this little brush, and we're going to have a little fun. Look at this. Put some of that right in there. Highlight some of this. That's a little bit of highlight there. It's coming off the paint that's already been put on and, and hardened. Okay, that's all we're doing is a little bit of pattern there. So you can actually see where those guys are. All right, we can cheat. We can cheat. Because now you can add a little, just the white. We'll put one right up in here, a little smaller. And it's, it's kind of coming in toward the barn there, like that. See how you just continue all of that? Okay, that's our little cheat there. Okay. Time for some more. <coughs> Time for some more pines. Type of tree I'm going to show you right now. This type of tree takes a lot of uh, a lot of thick paint. All right, you'll see in a bit here. I'm just going to take nothing but pure paint and see if I can get enough of it here to help me out. I don't need. I don't think I need water anyway. Uh, maybe just a little touch. When I say a little touch, I really mean a little touch with this thick stuff. Okay. All right. Now this brush. You see the interesting little patterns there? I'll just open it up a little bit. These weird shapes there. All right, that's gonna help us out. We'll put this guy right about here. Now we'll tap it right here. Now what I'm doing, as I'm tapping, I'm gonna go to the left and to the right. Just like that. To the left and to the right. Get you all sorts of interesting patterns. And we're gonna highlight it in the same fashion. I'll put, the, I'll put this tree right in here close there just like that won't do any more than that leave it there just like that okay let's go to the other side I guess I can put one a little bit closer because I need something to kind of go in maybe a little bit in front of the barn or obscure the barn a wee bit Okay, it's just going to set this guy back. I don't really want to get rid of the little tractor thing in there because I think it's pretty cool. Okay, so believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen, I have run out of dark color, but that's okay. I'm going to use a little bit of this deep brown Indian ink in the paint that I already have looked down below, right down here. I'm going to just pour it a couple drops just like that. All right. It's going to mix into that weird bluish that I got here. All right. So I'm going to incorporate all of that dark. Okay. Indian ink mixed with heavy body acrylic. All right. Now, careful placement on this one. Uh, he's a little bigger. So let's put him right about here. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just tap. As I'm tapping, I'm gonna tap to the left and to the right, just like this. I'm gonna try to keep away from that tractor. And I looks like I did. I'm going, I'm pressing a little heavier. This tree's bigger. Okay. And he's really covered up over there. 
but get get the interesting patterns where the edges of the tree is that will be there so this guy's a little matter of fact I'm gonna have him kind of come over some of that wire there just spread him out just a little bit okay we're good we're good right there so we got this guy there and we got this fellow now with doing trees like this it, uh, if you can use a thicker brush like if you have something like like this fellow but obviously you would need a brush much it's this thickness but about that size I more than likely got one I'm just too lazy to find it so we're gonna go into our yellow all right we're gonna put that yellow right up into this mix because this mix has blue in it believe it or not I'm taking the smallest amount of white and I mean small in there that shouldn't be too too light all right here we go um I'm gonna open flatten that a little bit we can get very interesting shapes here and I'm gonna take it small touch boom just like that small touch and going to the right swing it swing it around just like that very interesting little shapes to this guy and we're gonna highlight it we're not gonna we're not gonna have it too too um too dark or too light I'm gonna get I'm getting some more <coughs> go towards the bigger tree right here and you can see bits of the Sun touching here and touching here it's okay and we're gonna do the same thing here you're not gonna get rid of all of that dark don't don't do that right up in here right up in there just like so put it right in there make it really interesting all right put some of those in the center there just like that now we're gonna take some titanium white and some yellow some cute little highlights but we're gonna pop the highlights boom just like that especially toward the inside bring some around but it's mainly on the on the one side you guys cannot see that but there we are okay just like so and we'll keep it just like that let's go on the other side show you what I did we'll put the highlights because the sun's right around here so we're gonna pop some of that highlight right in there okay just like so get a little nice little grouping of this stuff right up in there bring some on the other side and we just kind of tap some interesting patches in there just like that don't be afraid to bring some on the other side pop one in there like that kind of frame that tree a little bit in there like that I'm gonna return some of that dark in certain spots there bring some of that you still need some dark to kind of accent that light and this tree is kind of up there a little bit okay and we're gonna put a little bit of trunk in there especially for this big one here it's a little bit right in here like that and we're gonna pop a pop one right in there as you get toward the top though kind of put them in there like that okay make sure something look like something's holding that tree up this one here <coughs> not as much a little bit like that and get a little bit there at the top we can wipe away some of that there like so just a little bit and I think that that should be it more or less um I don't think we need anything else let's let's pull back I think we pretty much did it here okay 
like I say, I wanted to obscure a little bit of the barn. Okay, I can actually add another pine or something around in here to just obscure it a little bit, but I think it's fur back farther um, back enough. So I don't think we need to do any of that. So we're coming on the tail end of this. I'll get what's a little left of this titanium white here, put it on my liner brush, and I'll throw my name on it right about in here. I'd like to thank you guys for checking this out. I do appreciate it. Hope it helps you. I really do. Let me know in the comments below. Good, bad, or indifferent? I would like to know. Okay. And you know, as I usually do, I will throw a frame on it real quick. So, the reason why I border my, my edges is because I think it looks a lot more professional looking. It looks like a lot neater. I'll go through this process too. I usually either get rid of this part, I edit it out or whatnot. It'd be just like a little fade jump cut. But I want to show you the whole process here. I lift up and away from the artwork because acrylic paint will leave a film. And when that film attaches to the tape, if you pull inward, it's going to rip all the way through. I'm giggling because I've done it on a live. It's no fun. So it's a little pull, go downward, comes right off. Boop, just like that. All right. And there you, <clears throat> there you have it. Let's pull it back a little bit. Let's use the original frame that it will fit. Because this is 11 by 15, it will fit on a frame like this, and it will look like that on the frame. Um, there. Looks like that, okay? So that's what it will look like in a frame. At least a black frame anyway. All right, now the other one I have is for 11 by 14. I would usually use canvas paper, which is 11 by 14. Okay, uh, and it will look somewhat like that on a brown frame. I think a brown frame would fit for this more natural. Okay, so, and you would figure that this frame would fit be the one that would fit but it's, it's not it's for 11 by uh, 14 inch area okay so like I said you would figure this one would be the one but it's not all right this would fit perfect with 11 by 14 and one day I would show you I kind of like the 11 by 15 but um the canvas paper is 11 by 14 is pretty pretty cool but all right my palette um is a mess I'll have to clean that wash that out okay guys thank you very much for watching this um i do appreciate it and hopefully i made this example um uh um understandable and clear all right um a lot of activity going on here with all that greens and the different types of of, uh, of greens that are put in here okay and once again my name is anthony gray and I thank you for watching, um, and I hope to see you again soon.